Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity Aylesbury. We are really pleased that you're here with us to worship together online this morning, wherever you find yourself logging on from today. Whether that's locally to Aylesbury or further afield, it's been great to see people joining from even as far as Kenya to worship with us on Sunday mornings. My name's Amy and with the help of a few other people, I'm going to be leading us through our worship service together this morning where we are worshipping all ages together across the summer holidays through from the very very youngest through to the very very oldest members of our congregation. Our story this morning is about the precious pearl. We're going to find out more about it later but this morning I wondered if we could start off whether you guys would help me out by praying for something that is really precious to me. Now that thing that's really precious to me is all of you, sat at home, our church family. And what I'd love us to do, just think about one person in our church family who's older than you. Could be really, really loads older than you. It could be just a matter of days. And now think about someone in our church family who is much younger than you, or even just a little bit younger than you, and bring them to mind. I'm going to pray before we sing together. And I just love you just to hold before God those two people from our church family. And I'm just imagining a web of prayer covering our church family across Aylesbury and beyond. So Father God, we thank you that you love all people from the very youngest to the very oldest. We are each precious to you. And I just pray now that you would meet with each of us in our homes, that you would help us to feel connected at a time when connection can be more difficult. We welcome you here this morning, Lord. Amen. We're now going to be um, led in song worship. Please do join in if you'd like to, by a father and son duo, which is something that I also feel is really precious. So I'm gonna hand over to um, Chris and Daniel as they lead us in a song, Everlasting God.
Um, over the last few weeks, we've had various updates from many of our mission partners, both locally, close to Aylesbury and um, further away, such as Peru. And this morning, I have invited Tom Rawling from Aylesbury Vale Youth for Christ to share with us what, what things are like um, for them at the moment and their vision going forwards. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Tom to update you and then we'll be led in prayer, um, firstly by some of our young people and then by the foster family. Hi Holy Trinity, um, I've been asked to give a little video update about what's happening here at Aylesbury Vale Youth for Christ. I think we last saw each other in February when the world used to be normal. So um, one of the things that we did firstly when, when everything kicked off in March, uh, I thought to myself, oh, what should we do? Like everything's in lockdown, I can't really go anywhere. So I thought I'd read the whole Bible in in 90 days because about at that point there was like 12 weeks that um, after which the government was saying at that point that maybe everything would be under control so I thought I bet I can smash out the whole Bible in 12 weeks and then make little videos on it um, so I did that and then we've now got 88 two minute videos spanning the whole Bible um, so here's a little taster of one of those it's about all pretty normal after that he gets treasures from wise men hunted by a murderous king and survives a genocide by escaping to Egypt he grows up and gets baptized by a camel head bug eating desert man straight after his baptism the heavens open and God tells him through the clouds that he loves him totally normal guy then he hangs out in the desert for 40 days where Satan tries to convince him to open a bakery everyone knows he prefers to be a fishmonger because the next thing he does is make friends with a load of fishermen. Next stop, he heals absolutely everyone he sees and gives some of the best teaching the world has ever heard in chapters five to seven. He says really easy to follow stuff like don't get mad with people, love your enemies, and try your best to squeeze through really small spaces. You may wonder why did I bother doing that? And to be honest, I asked myself that most of the time I was making them and even to some extent now, but Lucy Fraser read the whole flipping Bible in 90 days. Lucy, if you're watching this, hero. But that was all very exciting. Um, and what we've been doing since is that we've been trying to figure out what now are we going to do about Central Cell. Um, of course, we, ha we did have plans to assemble the young people from nine churches every week to do discipleship together. And we're right now in the process of trying to figure out what that looks like um, digitally in a way that retains the stuff about building relationship um, and doesn't mean that if there's another lockdown or another spike, then we're going to find ourselves in, in serious problems again. So right now we are doing all the administrative work and the planning and the resources uh, to create Central Cell in a way that we hope is going to be lockdown and second spike proof. So if you could pray for us, um, if, if, you want, if you want to pray for us right now, the, the best thing that you can ask for, firstly, as I said in February, and I didn't know how pertinent this would be, please just pray for wisdom, that we would know the way ahead, and that we would, we would know what to do. Um, but also, just, just pray that, that God would guide us as we try to take this concept of bringing everybody together and, and meaningfully do it in digital space, in a way that we then hope is going to translate into physical space when... Um, when coronavirus is a little more under control, whatever that's going to mean. So it's, uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. If you need to know anything else, uh, you've got any questions for us, please do just contact us on the website or email the office or just email me, tom at uk. All right, cheers, guys. See you later. Lord Jesus, we pray for Tom and every value for Christ. Um, thank you for everything that they do. Um, and everything that's going to happen in the future. Um, we pray for wisdom and guidance for Central Cell and everything else. Um, that yeah, you would just show a really clear way forward and you would be right at the centre of it. And Lord, I really pray for the youth of Aylesbury um, that when they are watching the Central Cell and participating in it that they really feel a connection with you and grow deeper in their relationship with you and even bring new people to meet with you and how awesome that would be. Amen. Hello, we're going to do some prayers now and uh, we're going to use a form called the teaspoon prayer uh, reminding us using letters which things we've got to remember to pray for. So teaspoon otherwise known as TSP. So TSP are the letters that we use to remind us. And the first letter T is for thank you. The second letter is for sorry. 
and the third letter is for please. And we think about those letters now um, and we think about the prayers that we can say to God um, in, in that way, to say thank you for things, to say sorry for things and to say please for things. So we start with the letter T. The letter T is for thank you. So just spend a moment now thinking about the things you want to say thank you to God for. And I'll say some prayers for things that I think we should all say thank you to God for. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our health workers, for our teachers, for our mums and dads, for our brothers and sisters, for our family members. We thank you that they love us and we love them too. And Lord, we thank you that they keep us safe, they keep us fed, they keep us healthy. We thank you that we've got homes. We thank you that we've got a community that we live in. And Lord, we thank you for all the good things that you do for us and that you help us with. Amen. And now we think about the letter S, which is for sorry. And we come before God and say sorry for those things that we've done this week that maybe we shouldn't have done and for the things that we've said that maybe upset or hurt somebody. And Lord, we just ask that you will help us and to think about the things that we do and the words that we say. Help us to be kind to our brothers and sisters and not say nasty things. And help us to do those things that we should when we're asked and not do other things instead. And now we come to the letter P and we say, please Lord, help us with these things. So please, Lord, help us to find a vaccine to cure this coronavirus situation. Please, Lord, look after those who are on their own, who are maybe feeling lonely at this time. Put your comforting arms around them. Please help us to make the most of this time. This is a special time when we can be with our family. Let us think of it as a fun time and not one that's really difficult. Help us to have a positive attitude right now, Father. And hold those whose lives are changing at the moment. Maybe their job situation has become difficult. Maybe they've lost their job. And for children who have now finished at school and going into the school holidays, please, Lord, help those whose lives are changing. And Father, we ask you to help the economy. Please help those in difficulty at this time. Help the financial situations of organisations and individuals Help them come through this and be okay as we go back into what we hope will be normality soon. And so now, just to close, we'll join in the words of the Lord's Prayer. So we say together, Our, Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us join together in sung worship. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me.
who brings our chaos back into order, who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of all kings. Who's the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance? The King of Glory, the King of all Kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me
Today our Bible story is called The Precious Pearl and it can be found in Matthew chapter 13 verses 45 to 46. Jesus said, Also, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man is looking for the fine pearls and when he finds one that is unusually fine, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that pearl. My prize possession is my Green Beret and my medals, which were awarded when I was joined the Royal Marines. My prize possession is my teddy bear and my family. My prize possession is my Xbox controller. My prize possession are all the photos I have, which remind me of all the things I've done over the years and my lovely family and friends that I've spent them with. My prize possession is my me medal when I won it at cross country. Uh, my team came second and my teddies. I wonder what you would have said if I asked you that question. What is your most prized possession? And quite often, it's not the answer that holds the most monetary value in our lives. It's not the most expensive thing in our house. I think my most prized possession is um, this picture. As you can see, it's of two dogs. I don't actually even like the picture. I'm never gonna hang it on the wall in my house, but it was a picture given to me after my granddad had died and it held so much um, meaning to him and it was such a special possession of his that for me to have it makes it my most prized possession. Our story today was found in Matthew chapter 13. And if you have a Bible, why don't you flick it open with me? because it's a story where Jesus is teaching us about something that is so, so special. He's trying to tell us what the kingdom of heaven is like. And in this chapter, we don't just find one parable about what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's one of many, and that's just within one chapter. And the gospels are scattered with Jesus talking about what the kingdom of heaven is like. So it seems to me that Jesus is trying to use as much imagery as possible, many different examples, to, to, to convey his message to the people gathered around him about what the kingdom of heaven is like. He uses kneading dough in bread, hidden pearls, hidden treasure, mustard seeds growing. Read it for yourself. It's, it's all there in the Gospels. I remember back to um, when I was doing fractions at school. I was faced with an A4 page with loads of circles and different amounts of the circle were coloured in to try and teach me what fractions were. Now I quite like maths, but circles weren't very motivating to me. But when the teacher brought out plates of cake for us to learn fractions with, that got me so much more motivated to do maths at school. And this is a bit like what I think Jesus is doing. He's using different imagery to try and capture different people's attention, to try and capture their mind as to what will engage them and motivate them to understand this precious, precious thing of the kingdom of heaven. I don't know if you, or maybe you know someone who collects those Lego minifigures, the ones that come in a sealed packet, so you never really know um, which minifigure you're about to spend your money on. Um, but the, that's the kind of story I imagine Jesus might use today 
to teach us about this hidden pearl to kind of liken it. So you're going through the basket, it's a bit like a lucky dip and one packet is open and you have a, have your peek in and you realise that it is the one minifigure that you have been waiting for, searching for, for weeks and weeks and weeks to complete your collection. You're not just going to put it back in the basket and walk off. You're going to grab it. You're going to run to the till and buy it. Or if you don't have the money, you're going to use your best pester power to try and get someone else to buy it for you. You will not want to leave the store without that Lego minifigure. And that's kind of what I think might be a bit of a modern day example of what Jesus was trying to teach us in our story today. I'm going to um, read our Bible passage or just before where we read from earlier um, now, but I'm going to read from a translation of the Bible called The Message, because for our story today, it uses some really exciting language. So are you listening to this? Really listening? God's kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field for years and then accidentally found by a trespasser. The finder is ecstatic, what a find, and proceeds to sell everything he owns to raise money and buy that field. Or God's kingdom is like a jewel merchant on the hunt for excellent pearls. Finding one that is flawless, he immediately sells everything and buys it. So from our story today, there's three questions I want to really briefly ask us and start trying to answer, but maybe they're things that you might like to pick up over lunch with whoever you're eating with today or when you're seeing a friend during the week or maybe in your small groups if you're meeting at the moment. The first question I want us to ask is what is the kingdom of heaven? Is it a place we can go and visit like the supermarket? Is it something we can find like the pearl or hold on to like our most prized possession? Do look through the other parables that I was mentioning earlier in, in the book of Matthew which all start with the kingdom of heaven is like, so they're quite easy to find. They really help us build a picture up of what this kingdom of heaven is that Jesus is talking about. But when I read it, and what makes sense to me, is that the kingdom of heaven is simply wherever God is at work. And the second question I'd like us to look at today is then what do we learn about the kingdom of heaven? What we learn is that it is something that we can search for and find. It's something that we need to search for and find. It's not something that is automatically obvious to us from birth. But then when we do find it, when we experience it, when we witness it, it is worth giving up everything else we have for. But this also means that we might need to show others or help others to witness or bring others into the kingdom of heaven. It's not something that when you have, you want to keep quiet and to keep just to yourself. It's something that it is worth trading everything for. And then the third and final bit that I just want us to think about quickly today is what do I need to do about the kingdom of heaven then? If we've worked out what it is and what we learn about it, what do we need to do about it? I think we need to go all in. Prepared to give up everything. Prepared to give up even our most prized possession. But it isn't just about being all in with our possessions. Most of us, many of us, would find that quite easy if push came to shove. But it's also all about going all in with our time, with our affections, with our wants, our desires, and saying nothing compares to what the call that Jesus has on my life, what the kingdom of heaven means in my life is worth more than whatever I could want, dream, desire or hope for. It's about being prepared to commit all that we have into showing our friends God at work, into showing our colleagues God at work. They might see the examples in our own lives. They might see the examples in others' lives. What was helping me when I thought about this was thinking about some old fashioned scales with the, with the two sides and assuming that it's the kingdom of heaven and then it's everything I have. And it's, it's not about just taking off enough so that it, it just just tips in favour of the kingdom of heaven. It's about wiping off one side of it and saying, I am all in for the kingdom of heaven. Nothing else on this side matters to me anymore. When we glimpse it, we can't help but go all in. When we see God at work, it is so amazing and so beautiful that there is nothing else that we could put in its place. 
that would ever replicate it or take its space in our lives. In a while, um, we're going to have the chance to do something that is really precious to us as the family of God together. We've been talking about precious things this morning and we're going to have the chance to um, share bread and wine together. So if you do want to um, join in with that with us, please do go and grab something to eat and something to drink. But we are going to join together first in singing a song, O Perfect Love, singing of the love that God has shown and lavished upon us, not holding back anything. And then how do we respond? We hold nothing back and go all in for his kingdom. So let's sing together, O Perfect Love. And so we come now to an informal breaking of bread. Now, I know that this is not the same as sharing Holy Communion together as a congregation 
here in this church worship space. And we do look forward to being able to start doing that again together, even in smaller numbers from September. But in the meantime, we do this in remembrance of all that Jesus has done for us and his command to his disciples at the Last Supper. For this, you ideally need a plate with some bread or a wafer or a biscuit or a cracker and also a cup with some wine or grape juice or ribena. If you don't have them, that's fine. And I just encourage you to receive and pray for God's blessing on you at this time. Parents, could you take responsibility for whether or not your children receive on this occasion? As we come to this break of bread, what is your most treasured possession? That's one of the questions which comes through today's service. How valuable is Jesus? How valuable is the kingdom of God to you? And how are you going to seek after them? Let's pray that God blesses us and fills us with his presence through this breaking of bread. I'm going to read now from what we understand to be is the earliest account of the Lord's Supper, written by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we read how Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so, Heavenly Father, as we remember how Jesus said, this is my body, and how he said of the cup, this is my blood, may we eat and drink these gifts in remembrance of all that God has done. So let's draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink and remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite you now to eat and drink of these, bread, these gifts of bread and wine and pray for God's blessing to fill you. And so as we've received the bread and the wine, and as we've asked for God's blessing, so let me ask again, what is your most prized possession? And how valuable is Jesus to you? How valuable is the kingdom of God to you? How are you going to seek God's kingdom as you live through this coming week? Let's commit ourselves to that as we pray the prayer we so often pray after Holy Communion, as we pray, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As we come towards the end of our service now. 
we are, as I said earlier, really pleased that you are connecting in with us at the moment. If you'd like to connect in more, if you'd like more information or if you um, want to, someone to chat to, please do get in touch with us at office at htalesbury.org and we'll be able to find the right people to put you in touch with. But as we finish, let me pray the blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>